This is true for us and the business that we serve through high level is if you can help them better visualize the numbers that they have now that they're using a system robust like high level, they will start to naturally improve and make those decisions a little bit quicker. It's multiple dashboards, it's dashboard templates. It is a whole new era of data visualization. It's everybody's favorite time of the week. <laughs> it's Matt Desino's high level hot takes. Here we go. <laughs> Vision for, for the show. If you've been around the podcast, obviously we've got some cool interviews talking to cool folks and just di- digging into all things high level. But in this lens, I want to make it simple and easy to understand what's going on if something's new and then should you pay attention to it? So I'm going to do my best to try and contextualize um, how this is happening. And, and if you're listening to an episode and this is year down the road, hopefully this is still valuable as you start to understand all that all that high level can do. For us today, they just released this idea of multiple dashboards. And so for context here, for the first four years, almost four years of high levels of existence, dashboards have been rigid. They've been set, not able to customize it at all. And so by dashboard, we're talking reporting. What does it look like to see the analytics for what's going on inside of your account? Uh, you know, how many leads did I get? How's the pipeline looking? You know, what uh, do I have any tasks I need to you know attend to? And so this is a pretty common feature for a, a CRM or any sort of like marketing reporting in there. And so, like I said, for, for the first four years, totally rigid. Then they started to evolve this. So now uh, they had a different look and feel to it. And then they said you could actually add new widgets to the dashboard, but it was per sub account. So you'd have to do it each time. So if you have, you know, 30 clients, you're going 30 times to say, Hey, add this widget, show the stat, whatever it might be. Now what they've done, which they're putting under the category of like multiple dashboards, but basically you can have dashboard templates. So you can now set up a, a template aesthetic KPIs that might be true for you know all of your clients and you can kind of change what's being visually represented in this dashboard. So super handy, super useful, and, and, and allows you to do it not on a per account basis, but more so globally. So you can kind of have uh, templates and maybe maybe this is true for all of your clients where they want to see, okay, here's my customer satisfaction dashboard which is something based on, you know, a net promoter score form or something like that. And here's my sales dashboard. So that could be an example where you have multiple dashboards in an account, sales dashboard, you know, customer satisfaction dashboard. Um, But also you can templatize that. So you can deploy that over multiple accounts. And so this is a, I think this will become a foundational tool element is the ability to change data visualizations and when is this relevant or useful you know really at all stages of business so if you're just running it for yourself consider creating new dashboards i'll i'll give you um for us because high level has been rigid we still use high level for all of our internal operations everything going on there we we use it to to the, the full extent of of what it possibly can do but we've had external tools that we've supplemented for this data visualization. Just like, how do I show, you know, a chart kind of tracking how how are we doing for our monthly recurring revenue against our goals? Or how do I show a, you know, a, a chart showing our customer satisfaction? How are we doing from that side? Um, we might visualize how we're doing internally. How's our internal customer satisfaction? These quick, actionable dashboards that visualize your business stats, your business analytics, your business numbers that, that allow you to, to do something with it. Because, you know, the truth for any business is if you measure it, you can manage it. And if you manage it, you can improve it. The gap there, you know, there's kind of like each stage, there's there's a fall off. So a lot of businesses, they don't measure enough. So there's no chance they're measure, they're managing it. And there's no chance they're improving it. But after you've got the measurements, what does it look like to effectively manage it? And so that that's where if it's easy to see it, if it's easy to know when something is off target or, you know, exceeding expectations, you need to do more of it, whatever it is. And so that's where the idea of dashboards or some sort of like data visualization inside of your hub, the marketing, you know, where you're doing most of your marketing activity, you see how it aligns the team. Everybody sees the same numbers. Um, it, it expedites or it quickens our ability to make decisions. So you don't have to wonder. You're like, oh, I see it. it's glaring me in the face. Something's going well or something's not going well. And, and then you effectively improve at a much faster cadence. And you've seen this, you know, anecdotally for personal dashboards, <laughs> I uh, got a smart scale and I just added the rhythm of weighing myself every morning. And I went through all these programs and they're like, you know what? Half of the battle is uh, not half the battle, but like a, a quick hack. If you, you know, care about weight management or anything like that, is just weigh yourself every day and subtly just having that number, like measuring 
a statistic that you care, you know, a, a number that you care about and then visualizing it. So for me, I got the smart sale. So like I just step on it, it tracks it there. And then I see a little chart and I can see fluctuations. I can see uh, flows over time. And it's funny just seeing that you can even put in like, here's my goal. And he's funny. It's just, I just track it every yeah, day, do. put the goal there. So it visualizes like what direction you're heading versus where you want to be going or however that goes. And the activities that you know you should do, you just kind of do them subconscious or you're more yeah. likely to do them because what you're doing is you're reinforcing a why. And for us as business owners, we will hold all the numbers that we care about in the business by ourselves because we know the why. We're highly motivated into this bigger why of profitability, or cash flow, all this sort of stuff. For our team, it's a little bit more murky. And so this is true for us and the business that we serve through through high level is if you can help them better visualize the numbers that they have now that they're using a system robust like high level, they will start to naturally improve and make make those decisions a little bit quicker. So that's what we got going on. It's multiple dashboards, it's dashboard templates. It is a whole new era of data visualization inside of high level. And, and we're super excited about it. Matt, you've been in the agency and the SaaS world for a long time. What, you know, similar to your person, you know, your personal metric of stepping on the scale every day, what are one or two of the key numbers that you really think businesses in this SaaS space need to be looking at in their dashboards? That's great. Uh, the two buckets that I consider are leading and lagging, uh, leading, leading and lagging indicators. So for example, um, MRR, your monthly recurring revenue is a great number measure and look at it all the time. It's a lagging indicator of sales, right? It's like, we got that, uh, it's a lagging, it's, it's like the scoreboard, but it's, it's the after effect. Once you see it, you can't change it. It's like, that's, that's where we're at, but it gives you a good point. You should be looking at that regularly. Leading indicators that might affect your MRR that we also try to like look at is you could go zoom out and be like new leads, number of new subscribers. Like those are good leading indicators. If I have more subscribers or more leads, I'm, um, or just measuring whatever that is, you'll see the activity. It'll start to, you know, affect that top line, uh, you know, recurring revenue. Um, other leading indicators on the negative side is like churn, right? The net, like what is churn, what's happening there. And if you go even further than that, you can do some, uh, net promoter score. So this is some sort of customer satisfaction indication of, are they happy with you? So that like a CSAT or a net promoter score is a leading indicator for churn. They are saying, I'm unhappy with you before they unsubscribe. So now you can see that leading indicator. You can, you can affect it, you can change it and then improve churn. Churn is a leading indicator of MRR for many businesses. If you looked at your churned revenue and turn that to zero, like if every customer you ever had was still with you today, how much would you be making monthly? It's astounding because it's retaining, like the most painful, painful thing it, that you like, yeah, go look at your stripe and churned revenue. And you're like, Oh, it's a painful <laughs> metric, but it's a re it, it is. Um, I use that to, to amplify the importance for myself is, yes. um, you know, to keep, keep an eye on that and, and to consider to innovate and improve how you deliver your product, how you, make sure that you're delivering as much value as possible and how you, um, you know, are, are being a best fit solution for the folks that are your customers. But, um, those are, uh, you know, big ones. If I was going to just pick three, I'd actually go like this is what we go is like MRR, like a customer satisfaction and net promoter score. So something like revenue, MRR, uh, customer satisfaction or net promoter score, and then team employee satisfaction, employee net promoter score. If I was just going to pick three is like, could I make decisions for the business on those are the three I could know are we growing? Uh, I guess, and if you want, you should add a fourth in there, which is profit margin. So whatever your your, sure. your actual net take is. If you get those four, are my customers happy? Are, is my team happy? Am I growing top line? And am I stabilizing or growing my bottom line? Um, you can make decisions. And it's surprising. You might be listening and feeling conflicted about this. People don't carry that as regular stats in, in their face. They can't tell you on a day-by-day -day basis, what's my MRR? What's my, you know, profit margin? What's my customer satisfaction? And what's my team satisfaction? Um, if you have those, all of them are spectrums to manage. You're continually growing in them, but uh, you just see how just putting regular attention to it, you'll you'll start to see those areas improve. 